Good afternoon, everybody. Hello and welcome to course number 5157, Brush Day and Night Phase 4, Achieving Improved and Sustainable Oral Health Worldwide. My name is Russell Choi, and I'll be hosting today's course. I have a few announcements to share with you before we begin. Please be courteous to our speakers and other attendees. Smart devices should be silenced and please use hashtag EDAFDI and share a post with your photos on your social media pages. Fire regulations prohibit standing in the aisles, sitting on the floor or blocking the doors. Place all personal belongings on the seat on, on the floor under your seat and do not place the belongings on the seat next to you. If needed, please move to the middle of the rows to accommodate more attendees. Immediately following today's presentation, I will announce the course verification code. The code is unique to this course and required to verify your attendance in your CE credit. Now, I would like to introduce FDI President, Dr. Kathy Kell. Thank you very much and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here today. It's a real pleasure to welcome you to the 2019 ADA FDI World Dental Congress session on Brush Day and Night Phase 4, Achieving Improved and Sustainable Oral Health Worldwide. I want to start by congratulating our project experts, on the ground leaders and industry partner for the commitment to Brush Day and Night at a time when close to 500 million children suffer from dental caries, your work proves that you care deeply about the optimal oral health of everyone and that you are ready to achieve it. I'd like to recognize Brush Day and Night Project experts, Professor Paolo Mello for his guidance and investment to help make this project what it is today. I also look forward to learning from our on the ground project leaders, Professor Bodhi Nigeria and Professor Iri of Indonesia, <laughs> and as they share their insights, challenges, and successes during the interactive uh, question and answer series that you're going to have today. And I certainly want to recognize Unilever for their on-the-ground support for this project. Thanks to our partnership, FDI has been able to advance its goal to fight tooth decay and improve children's oral health, oral hygiene, and overall well-being. Unilever has been a steadfast partner of FDI since 2005. Our goal has always been to make significant steps towards measurably improving oral health for both adults and children across the world. Together, I believe we make a positive impact on society and we provided a model of success oral, with a successful oral health programs over the 14 year partnership. So thank you Dr. Rao and Dr. Malone for your presence here today. FDI is proud of its efforts to promote oral health worldwide and advocate for oral diseases, especially childhood caries, to be included in global health agendas. We know that dental caries can be preventive by managing risk factors and adopting a healthy diet, having good oral hygiene habits, including brushing twice daily with the fluoride toothpaste. As dental caries overwhelmingly affects people with limited means, Brush day and night is our way to promote oral health in communities without adequate access to oral health education or regular dental care. While our brush day and night program is carried out in schools, I wanna emphasize the inclusive holistic nature of the uh, project. While our primary focus has been on oral health education in schools, brush day and night also encourages children to become community advocates and spread the message of good oral health to their families and friends. This contributes to the overall sustainability of the project, which we'll hear more about during this session. So let's get started. I look forward to hearing directly from our speakers. First, it's our privilege to introduce Professor um, uh, let's see, Prof Professor uh, Arathi, for, if you'd like to come on up here. <laughs> Professor Arathi Rao. And let, next we're going to introduce Dr. Sinead Malone, who has over 20 years experience in R&D experience. Sinead currently works as part of the oral healthcare R&D team too at Luna Lever. So including supporting the professional uh, marketing team with communications and campaigns to dentists. 
Finally, I uh, would like to first, I think, introduce Arenthi. So if you would like to come to the stage and do your presentation. Thank you again, Unilever, and thank you again, the Brush Day and Night Project. Thank Thanks. You so much. <laughs> thank you so much, Dr. Kelly. It's been a pleasure working with you. Hello everybody, good afternoon. My name is Dr. Arti Rao and I'm based in London in Unilever and I'm responsible for all the programs run under social mission in Unilever Oral Care. So I am a part of uh, the Unilever Oral Care based out of the UK office as I mentioned. Um, as you all know, dental caries is the most widespread chronic disease worldwide. It affects almost half, 44% of the world's population. Dental caries is an issue not only in the developed, but also in the developing countries and still the most chronic disease worldwide. In developing countries, 90% of caries remains untreated, leading to substantial pain and suffering, problems with eating and speaking, disfigurement and social deprivation, and economic ramifications such as absenteeism from employment and school. And very often people do not understand the consequences of dental caries, and it is very often not considered a priority as the message gets lost amongst the noise made by some of the other diseases. And one of the simplest of solutions to combat this problem is actually the simple act of brushing day and night with a fluoride toothpaste. There have been studies that have shown that brushing day and night with a fluoride toothpaste can actually cut dental caries by 50% compared with brushing once. Hence, inculcating good oral care habits is important in order to improve oral health. We all know that behavior change is so much more easier in younger children because habits once learned at a young age are more likely to be retained. Our partnership with the FDI is more than 12 years old and every phase is almost like three years. So in the last phase of our partnership with the FDI, we had actually conducted a research which has shown that the school program framework showed more promise regarding reach and facilitating the educational process. Hence, reaching out to the children in school is one of the best ways of bringing about a behavior change, as habits learned young are more likely to be retained through education and supervised toothbrushing in school and can be an effective way of reducing dental caries in the long term. So keeping this objective in mind, FDI and Unilever formed a partnership a little more than 12 years ago, with the key objective being to improve the oral health of the people. Our school programs are the key drivers to empower children and their parents with the knowledge and skills necessary to achieve good oral health for life through education and behavior change initiatives. So this is a very simple way that we thought that we could actually bring about some good in improving the oral health by bringing about a behavior change at a very young age. Just to give you a little bit of a recap about our partnership with the FDI. So it started, as I mentioned, a little more than 12 years ago. And we are proud to acknowledge a successful partnership with the objective to measurably improve oral health on a global scale. So at the global level, you have the partnership between Unilever and FDI. And at the country level, the local Unilever teams, the various brands, they work with the National Dental Association partners to run the oral health programs at a grassroots level. And over the last 12 years, there has been various projects run on ground, and we're delighted to have seen it grow and have such positive effects on the lives of children, families, and communities where our educational projects have been implemented. So these are the different phases of our partnership, as you can see. Initially, it was called Live, Learn, Laugh, and then subsequently, it was called Brush Day and Night. And, um, uh, and besides running the oral health education programs, that is on-ground activation programs, we also celebrate World Oral Health Day with the National Dental Associations in many countries, further reinforcing the message of brushing day and night. So the, the message has consistently been simple throughout all our programs, that is brushing day and night with the fluoridation 
related toothpaste. So as I mentioned, dental caries is still the most widespread chronic disease. So the partnership with FDI actually addresses the following objectives. To educate on brushing twice daily with a fluoride toothpaste and to empower children to become advocates for oral health among family and friends. So the entire idea of this project is basically to pass on the message to children who in turn become advocates, who get the message, who become advocates and then pass it on to their uh, family and friends. So let me tell you a little bit about what this 21 day brush day and night school program is all about. So this program educates children on the twice daily brushing habit who in turn pass on the message to their families at home to become ambassadors of oral health to pass on the message. The key influencers in this program are parents, teachers and dental health professionals. The concept is basically to create children ambassadors who can influence their parents to also develop the twice daily brushing habit with a fluoridated toothpaste and toothbrush. Behavioral science tells us it's very difficult to change habits acquired early in life. Most research studies have concluded that only after a minimum period of two weeks did they observe among children stickiness to new behavior. So our, the 21 day program is actually a three day intense program to inculcate new habits to establish the behavior. So a little bit about the program. Now this program was not just developed. There was a little bit, there's a little bit of science behind the program. So this program was developed based on Unilever's behavior change principles. Uh, Unilever has a long history in the use of marketing and market research to promote behavior change for better health. Along the way, we have learned a great deal about people. We have worked with psychologists, academics from leading universities, hygiene experts, scientists and marketeers. We have learned what motivates people and how to inform and engage them. The outcome of all this is the five levers for change model and this has actually been published as well. A set of principles which if applied to behavior change interventions will increase the likelihood of creating lasting change. So how does the model work? The first step is to gather insights into the people whose behavior we want to influence. So we identify what are the barriers that stop people from adopting a new behavior? What are the triggers we could use to encourage them to start a new behavior? And what are the motivators that can help them stick with the new behavior? So these insights were then used to shape a five-step behavior change program, which is as follows. Make it understood, make it easy, make it desirable, make it rewarding, and lastly, make it a habit. So make it understood. So this lever is all about raising awareness and encouraging acceptance. Do people know what the behavior is? Do they believe it's relevant to them? So, it's, so in our school program, it's very important that we make the children understand what the behavior it is that we want them to adapt. So basically what do we do? We ask the dentist or the dentist actually go into the schools and teach the children how to brush. So unless the child has understood how to brush, is once they've understood how to brush is only then they're likely to to have to actually make it into a habit so actually a, a practical demonstration of showing them how to brush is very important secondly make it easy so this is all about convenience and confidence in many cases we find that people understand the problem but they do not know what to do or do, they, do not feel confident about doing it or do, not, or do not see how it fits into their lives. So we need to make it easy and to make it easy what do we do? We need to give them a toothbrush uh, and a toothpaste. So once they have the tools to do the behavior, only then are they likely to do it. The third is desirable. It's all about self and society. So one of the biggest concerns quite often people have is, if I do this, what will others think of me? Or how will I relate to others? So the behavior needs to be socially acceptable. 
in order to make it desirable, we are talking to children. So we need to really talk to them, basically in the form of cartoons, a lot of fun and games. So what we have done is we have created all these cute cartoon characters, which children actually like a lot. They identify with the cartoon characters. There is a, a very nice toothbrushing song. There is a pledge that they take. So all this is something a child would like to do in order to repeat the behavior. Then make it rewarding. So to make it rewarding, we need to we need to remember that if a behavior change is communicated as a compromise for larger good, it will not work. So we need to provide proof that it works for the person and demonstrate the payoff. What is in it for them? Do people know when they're doing the behavior right? Do they get some sort of reward for it? So for children, something simple, like maybe they could actually get like a, a, a sticker or like a certificate at the end of the 21 day program just to motivate them to tell them, oh, you have completed the 21 day program and now you're ambassadors and you can go out and teach your siblings and your parents. So something very simple just to motivate them, to make them feel encouraged to actually carry on the behavior. And lastly, and most importantly, of course, is making it a habit. One of the most difficult steps is making the habit stick. So this lever is all about reinforcing and reminding. Once people have made a change, what can we do to help them keep doing it? So for this, what we have done is actually created a whole lot of calendars and stickers, a 21 day program calendars and stickers for the parents and for the children as well. And the teacher actually can put a sticker on the days when the children have done their brushing. So keeping these five levers in mind, the 21 day brush day and night school program with the aim to bring about a behavior change in the children and make them ambassadors to inculcate the twice daily brushing habit at home has been developed. It is quite simple, quite straightforward, easily doable. And this is something that has been rolled out in many countries. However, what we wanted to do was actually to assess the impact of the program. So in this phase of our partnership with the FDI, the objective was to measure the impact of the 21 day program. The study was conducted in two countries, Indonesia and Nigeria. The study measured the following, the impact on knowledge, behavior and toothbrushing habits in school children after a 21 day school program and compared with baseline and a control group, the impact on oral health, evaluating the longer term impact at eight weeks and 24 weeks to show if the program was effective in getting the parents also to improve their brushing habits and to measure the change in the quality of life and assess the social norms. In each country, some schools were selected to implement the program which consisted on face-to-face -face intervention with the dental team and the school children. And I will now hand over to Dr. Sinead Milon to further describe the study protocol in detail. Thank you so much.
smashing. <laughs> thank you for Dr. Troy to his help. And thank you to you for um, joining, joining today. And thank you to the FDI for inviting me to speak to you. So the title of my talk this afternoon is Methodology to Study the Effectiveness of Brush Day and Night in Improving Oral Health. So my name is Sinead Malone and I should make clear that I'm an employee of Unilever Oral Care in the UK. I work at Unilever Research and Development in Port Sunlight, which is near Liverpool. So as Artie just told us, the Brush Day and Night program is a fun and engaging 21 day program with the aim of establishing the habit of twice a day brushing with a fluoridated toothpaste. And you can see here some of the lovely customized materials that have been designed to support children, parents, carers, and teachers in the program. So before going on to look in more detail at the phase four methodology, it's useful to firstly look back at phase three. This study was conducted in 10 countries and you can see them listed here on the right hand side with the participation of 7,991 children aged between 2 and 12 years old. Data was collected using questionnaires and we looked at brushing knowledge, brushing behaviour and use of a fluoride toothpaste. And now some of the results from that phase 3 study, the most striking of which is the 25% improvement in twice daily brushing after 21 days. And when the 21 day intervention was repeated six to 12 months later, this repetition elicited a further 8% improvement. Improvements in brushing behavior were sustained for between six to 12 months. And we found that children aged seven to nine years old were most receptive to the program. By the end of the program, three quarters of the children brushed with a fluoride toothpaste and 82% of children brushed twice daily. We therefore concluded that the 21 day program leads to improved oral health, knowledge and behavior and more children brushing twice a day with a fluoride toothpaste. If you'd like to know more, I encourage you to take a look at our supplement published last year in the International Dental Journal. So when thinking about designing the phase four study, of course, we looked back to the phase three protocol. In phase four, we wanted an opportunity to uh, increase our knowledge of the effectiveness of the brush day and night program. And of course, we also wanted to design as robust and as rigorous a study as possible. We therefore decided to include control schools in this study and clearly divide, define exactly when evaluations were to be conducted. This was acknowledged as a weakness in the phase three study, where latter evaluations were carried out with, with between a six to 12 month window meaning that kind of in-depth and inter-country analysis was impossible. Based on our phase three experience, we also wanted to evolve the questionnaire design to make the questions easier for children to answer and also to um, help with later data analysis. In phase four, we also took the decision to add plaque and caries evaluations to our program. The, the addition of plaque is particularly important as this provides a non-subjective and more quantitative measure of oral health without some of the inherent problems uh, involved in self-reported questionnaires where respondents can be tempted to give the expected or required answer rather than the truthful answer. We are also interested in including parents and carers in the study. Could the Brush Day and Night program through the children influence parents and carers to also improve their brushing behavior. So a quick overview of the phase four study design. It was conducted in Indonesia and Nigeria, and we aimed to recruit 20 schools in both countries to be split between intervention and control. The design was a two-arm superiority randomized trial design, 
And based on our learning from phase three, we decided to recruit only children aged six to nine years old and their parents and carers. So why Indonesia and Nigeria as locations? And you remember before in phase three, we had 10 countries. Well, Indonesia and Nigeria have both, both have very active and experienced national dental associations and excellent and committed study leaders and teams. We also have established Unilever businesses in both countries with an oral care teams who are able to support the program with the provision of toothpaste, toothbrushes, and printed materials. So two excellent countries, but looking at phase three, we can also see that the two countries are very different. So in Indonesia, in phase three, we found that the proportion of children brushing twice a day at baseline was 84%, whereas in Nigeria, just 30%. So we have in our two countries, two very different um, populations with different baseline twice daily brushing frequency. So this again gave us an opportunity to probe in depth the effectiveness of the brush day and night program. Moving on to look at the study uh, protocol in more detail, starting with the study population. So we recruited children in school year grades one, two and three, aged six to nine years of either gender and in good general health. We have of course obtained the informed consent of their parent and carer. We also confirmed that their child planned to attend their current school for the next seven months. To be included in the study, children had to be free of any signs of untreated caries or significant periodontal disease and have no family affiliation with either the FDI or Unilever. For this study, we had identified <coughs> five study objectives ordered in priority to further guide our study design and our recruitment. Our primary objective was the impact on knowledge and behavior and toothbrushing habits in school children after the 21 day program and to compare that with baseline and a control group. Our secondary objective was to use plaque levels as a measure of oral health and look for an improvement after the end of the 21 day program, again comparing with baseline and children in the control group. We wanted to look in a very organized way at the longer term impact of the program and added evaluations at eight weeks and 24 weeks with that aim. We were again interested in looking at uh, whether the program could influence parents and carers. And our final objective was does the pro being involved in the program lift the well-being and quality of life of the children? On this chart, you can see how um, the evaluations for the parents and children in the intervention and control schools are organized. So children in the intervention schools receive the 21 day brush day and night program and free toothpaste and toothbrushes. Whereas children in the control schools just received toothpaste and toothbrushes. So as I said, we have evolved the questionnaire design from our experience in phase three. We took care to make the language as appropriate and as simple for children as possible. We added symbols for some questions, particularly, particularly those around feelings. And the questions included questions on brushing frequency, uh, brushing knowledge and quality of life. The questionnaire for parents, of course, was new for this study. It followed a very similar structure to that for children, but of course, more complicated questions. But again, the foundation of the questions was behavior, knowledge, quality of life, social interaction, and socioeconomic status. So to measure plaque, we decided to use the oral hygiene index. This is a four point scale, zero to three, with three being used to denote the most dirty or plaque covered teeth. 
And you can see in the box on the bottom right, the teeth that were scored in this study. And although Carey status was not one of our study objectives, we, never, we nevertheless took the opportunity of including a DMFT measure in this study to get prevalence data in both countries. Here you can see the study flow chart. So after recruitment and informed consent, baseline evaluations were taken at T0. Children in the intervention schools then started on the 21-day programme. Children in the control schools received the toothpaste and toothbrushes. We then, at the end of the 21 days, both control and intervention children completed the evaluations again. And these were repeated once more at T1, which is at eight weeks, and T2 at 24 weeks. And this chart gives you an overview of all the evaluations for both intervention and control groups at the different time points. So when we designed the study, um, working with the statisticians, we plan to recruit 20 schools to be split between intervention and control. And the intervention and control schools were matched, so they had similar, um, similar locations, for example, urban, semi-urban, rural, similar socioeconomic status. But it quickly became apparent that to run 20 schools at one point of time, it kind of exceeded the capacity, the logistical capacity of um, the National Dental Associations. The decision was therefore quickly made to split the study into two phases, phase one and phase two. So working around school holidays and religious festivals, you can see here the timing of the different phases in both Indonesia and Nigeria. Um, and phase two completed just a couple of months ago in Nigeria. So some of the outcome variables we were in, intending to uh, look for, uh, of course, these are aligned with our study objectives. We were looking for change in reported brushing frequency and knowledge immediately after the 21-day intervention, changes in plaque levels as measured by the oral hygiene index simplified, um, changes in brushing frequency and knowledge and also plaque levels at 8 and 24 weeks is the study, is the intervention sustainable? Any changes in the parents or carers reported brushing frequency and knowledge and any change in the child's reported well-being and social confidence. If you'd like to know more, you may be interested to know that we've submitted the protocol to JMIR research protocols and it's currently under review in that journal and fingers crossed please that we uh, receive acceptance of publication soon. So to conclude I'd just like to uh, thank uh, all those involved with me when we're designing this protocol. Those were Charlotte Fine from the FDI, Artie Rowe from Unilever and Virginie Horn who at that time was the FDI Education and Public Health Director. And thank you all for your time and attention this afternoon. This time I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Paolo Mello.
this one. Good, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, thank you for the previous presenters, Dr. Sine also. Um, the, my presentation, it's uh, about uh, the phase four results for the, of the investigation. And uh, we, are, we will try to understand the outcomes of Rush Day and Night program in Indonesia and Nigeria. The effectiveness, effectiveness, the effectiveness of plaque removal in children in Indonesia and Nigeria and the positive impact of the BDN program on local communities. Uh, the disclosure, I, I do not have any financial affiliations or conflicts of interest to disclose. And uh, as uh, you have already heard, the 21-day program is a 21-day supervised toothbrushing program in schools to teach the children the right habits and behavior uh, through brushing twice daily with the fluoride toothpaste. And in the uh, previous uh, phase three study, I believe that I have skipped one slide. Yes, sorry. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, when we're talking about child's oral health, we have to focus on some uh, essential uh, issues uh, like a good oral health behavior, uh, and this is essential for preventing oral diseases. So uh, the improvement on knowledge and behavior in, chil in children will certainly result in better oral hygiene. And for that, we, what we uh, really want is uh, to have an effective plaque control for uh, preventing not only care, dental caries, but uh, uh, periodontal disease. And we know that a regular twice daily toothbrushing with a fluoridated toothpaste is widely recommended in all age groups to reduce plaque and prevent oral disease. So, as I told you, you know about the 21-day program. And in the previous phase, phase three study, we had a wider perspective on the maintenance of oral health knowledge and behavior in children and the relevant short and medium term outcomes. This was published in 2018 and the results also showed in, in, in IDJ and the results also showed uh, a clear sustainability of the 28th program in seven to nine years old children, especially after six to eight months and an overall improvement of knowledge and behavior. <laughs> now, uh, in this 21-day program that was implemented, we wanted to improve the methodology, evaluate more variables that might interfere in the quality of children's life, and uh, we are going to show you some preliminary results. Uh, and I want you to take this as preliminary results. As you know, those studies, they take long time, you could see how it was hard to prepare it and how to make it run. And, uh, and so at the moment we are only showing preliminary results. The main objectives from, for this presentation, not for the whole study, is the, the, to, to see the impact on knowledge and behavior and toothbrushing habits in school children after 21 day school program and compare it with a control group and also the impact on oral hygiene after 21 day school program and compare it with the control group and evaluate the medium term impact of the 21 day school program on knowledge, behavior and oral hygiene after eight weeks and 24 weeks. Uh, some of the methodology was, was already uh, shown by Dr. Sineb, but anyway, uh, we have a study design that is to arm superiority randomized control trial. Uh, the countries that were involved was Indonesia and Nigeria. We had 2,000 children for each country, aged six to nine years old. And uh, for the randomization, we use cluster schools, and it was infant and junior schools. We randomized 44 schools, 22 in Indonesia and 20 in Nigeria. Uh, 12 of those schools were intervention uh, schools, and the 10 others were controls in Indonesia, and in Nigeria were 10-10 for each. 
each group. The control group, what we did was to uh, deliver toothbrush and toothpaste to everyone. And the intervention group, we did the 21 day program. Then we had the timeline, as, as you could see in the previous presentation, T0, where we took the baseline data, T0 after 21 days, and T1 after eight weeks, and uh, T2 after 24 weeks. Uh, for this data, we, uh, we introduced a questionnaire on oral health habits and a clinic evaluation on, on, on oral uh, plaque with, with the OHI sim simplified index and on dental caries on the MFT in T0 and T2. The questions that we're going to use uh, for this presentation uh, from the whole questionnaire are these three. Uh, one is about the, the fluoride toothpaste, if it, uh, the children uses or not the fluoride toothpaste. Then if it's important, uh, if, if the children think that it's important to brush their teeth every day. And the last one is how often uh, should you brush your teeth each day? And I want to highlight that these are questions directly formulated for the children and not for the parents, because what we want is the children to take the information for uh, the parents. So this is also something that uh, is part of the program is to take the information for the family. The, as you know, the simplified oral health index was used, as I told you, uh, to assess uh, children's oral hygiene status. And, um, and this is uh, the way that we think that we could measure uh, in a more accurate way the, 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 the efficacy of brushing the teeth. So um, the children might say that they brush their teeth, but if, if uh, uh, we um, uh, see here a, a high simplified oral health index or high level of black, this means that he is only saying that he brushed, but he doesn't. So most of the times might happen. So uh, for this uh, age group, we have to, um, to use the equivalent sedus teeth when the permanent teeth were not pre present. So you have here, you know, this is, you have all the lingual surfaces in the upper uh, jaw and in the, in the lower jaw, you have the vestibular uh, on the molars and the lingual in, in the incisor. To assess the, uh, the, the, the following in both intervention and control group, we, uh, we did the, the statistical analysis. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and, uh, and what we want to see if there, if there was any change in knowledge and behavior using three questions from the children's questionnaire, those three that I have shown you. And uh, if there was uh, any change in clinical uh, oral hygiene status using the measure of visible plaque. The, all the, the, data, the, county, the databases were validated and anal analyzed using SPSCS. I want also to say that we have prepared a um, uh, digital uh, way of uh, uh, recording, re recording the data, but that was not feasible in some places. So they, it, it was paper and then we had to paste, pass it to Excel files and then SPSS. So it took a long and that's the reason, one of the reasons why we don't have uh, yet the, the whole results. Uh, the, the, it was a, a statistical institute based in Geneva Independent that did this, um, this an, that is doing this analysis. In the preliminary analysis, um, uh, we, we tried to see if there was any difference um, looking at the, the, the all-time intervention and control and the, and the intervention group and control group under the same linear regression or in the logistic regression. Uh, the dependent variable considered was the baseline intervention and the independent and explanatory variables are the evaluation time points T0, 21, T1 and T2. Uh, the change over time will be reported as a 95% confidence interval and associated p-value in, in, with the 95% confidence level, the models explains that the effect can be attributed to the program. And that's 
uh, how we did it. So uh, I will show you here what we did with the linear regression that uh, we could see um, on the left hand side the the, the t0 uh, all the time uh, uh, observations uh, and that baseline we can see that the intervention group had 80% uh, of the children already report that it is important to brush twice daily i, I want to to say that uh, we had in brush uh, uh, day and night uh, phase 3 we also had the, the the indonesia children participating and they had uh, showed a high level of uh, inform uh, knowledge at the, at the, at that stage so it's still uh, is consistent with what we have seen in, two, in 2000 in, in the previous study. Um, then you can see on the uh, right hand side the, the um, when one group is compared with the other and and here we can see uh, that there is a, a not significant uh, relationship like this can be no yes. yeah we can see. Uh, that there is a no, non-significant relationship between uh, uh, both groups, uh, control and, and, and intervention group, which means that we have a good outcome here. Uh, after two months, uh, which is this uh, intervention group here, um, we can see that uh, there is a knowledge of uh, that is important to brush twice a day that raised from 80% for 85%. And uh, here after six months, 89% uh, of those children in the intervention group uh, also um, know that uh, that uh, it's important to brush twice daily. So uh, this is uh, the results when you do a linear regression. And then we did also a logistic regression, uh, trying to measure the same, and we could see that there was a positive effect um, considering what is here related. If you have a value on this right-hand side, um, uh, it's, it's uh, um, like one or uh, there is no effect. Effect if it's bigger than one, it's positive effect. It's lower than one, it's negative effect. So we could see that this uh, the program has a positive effect uh, in the in the intervention group and and uh, and the control group uh, had a, a negative effect. So uh, the preliminary analysis allowed us to control for the quality of the collection the collected data. And also uh, in T0, it, uh, it showed us that the schools were assigned randomly and in a, a good way. So the, we could be uh, very comfortable with, with, uh, with the outcome. In addition, also the children question variables end up being dichotomic and, and logistic re regression should be used. Uh, results uh, are very close to using linear model. And that's the reason why for um, showing it easier for, uh, for the presentation, we used the, the, the linear model uh, and, uh, and we can, and, and that's what I will show you now. So the preliminary results at T0, we have, as, a, as you can remember, 22 schools, 12 intervention, and we had 1,107 children intervene, and 10 control with 914 children, which makes 20, 2,021 children involved in this, in this program in Indonesia. And what we knew at T0 is that 80% of children are aware of the, import the importance of brushing twice a day. And this is something that we, uh, as in the previous uh, uh, study uh, in, in brush uh, day and night phase three, we, uh, we think this, uh, uh, this question addresses well the knowledge of the children, the, the evolution of the knowledge of the children. And then uh, about the behavior, we, are, um, we want to know uh, if they use fluoride to space, and it's 85% in Indonesia at T0 that use it. And 98% and of children uh, use a toothbrush and a toothpaste to brush their teeth. Those are the two questions that you use for, to measure the, the behavior. 
Uh, here you can you can see the final sample on the intervention group, and uh, here I skip T0, T1, T0, T21, and T1, but uh, we can see that all the children were uh, obser observed in all in each time scale. So uh, what we have is uh, no dropouts in the intervention group in Indonesia, and also. Uh, it happened the same in the control group, no dropouts. The, uh, the Indo Indonesia could manage to see all the children in all time, time uh, points. Now, uh, when we try to understand uh, the difference between the intervention group and the control group, and, and uh, of course, I, I, uh, these are preliminary results, so we, we should in, uh, consider them as they are now. Uh, and if we, we uh, consider this question in the intervention group, we can see uh, that uh, there is a uh, um, raise of awareness uh, uh, about this um, uh, question from 80 to 89 percent. And this is a significant, uh, a strongly significant difference. So it improves during the, the, the time after the intervention. In the control group, uh, as we could see in the uh, in the model that I have shown you before, uh, the linear model, we could see that at the beginning there were 82 percent, and this is no difference from the intervention group. Um, there is no statistical difference, um, and then they drop, uh, they raise on the after 21 days so, so this is the the time that they ha they have their toothbrushes and toothpastes and it's natural that some of them they are still aware of this situation but then it drops to 75 percent and gives a difference between the, the control group and the intervention group on 50 uh, 15 percent which you can consider a uh, strongly di significant difference on this and here you can see um, in an easier way the, uh, the huge difference on this uh, question between the control group and the intervention group with significant outcomes here and here. Then the, the, the question of using the fluoride toothpaste here, you can see that both groups are similar. Sorry. Uh, and the, and uh, there is a knowledge that, uh, or there is an information that uh, also is getting uh, bigger uh, throughout the time, and uh, and so we have uh, eighty five percent and ninety percent, eighty three percent and eighty eight percent, and um, this is uh, not uh, significant uh, in the in the middle term and down. It shows a little bit of uh, a strong difference significantly, but I think we should not uh, consider that is a huge difference because uh, both have uh, a good knowledge on this or show a good knowledge on this. So. Uh, what we could say from this analysis uh, uh, is that in the intervention group, there is a high no knowledge level of the importance of brushing twice a day um, uh, at baseline, with 80% of children knowing that. Uh, the 21-day program, nevertheless, has a positive impact on an additional 9% uh, of children uh, knowing this uh, after six months. Uh, children knowledge gradually increases over time, so it comes from 83% to 85 and then 89%. At the end of the program, 90% of the children in the intervention group brushed with the, a fluoride toothpaste, which is more uh, 5% compared to baseline. The control group, uh, they also have a high knowledge level in the importance of brushing twice a day, but then um, it, dro it drops to 75% and this might have to do with, the, with the, this question of the, the intervention. A significant decrease in knowledge is, is observed and this uh, statistical confirmed. Uh, and at the end of the program, 88% of the children in the intervention group brush with a, a fluoride toothpaste, which is also five, more 5% 5 than in the baseline. 
So, and as I told you, uh, the oral hygiene index, simpl the simplified oral hygiene index, uh, will um, let us try to understand a little bit more what the children really does and how, how uh, what is the efficacy on brushing their teeth, uh, measuring the black levels. And so we can see that um, uh, in, in T0, the intervention group has 1.72. Uh, I, I have shown you that uh, this score ranges from zero to three, so the, it's uh, an average one seventy two for in those six spots that are measured, um, and uh, and the control group one point seventy three, which means that there is no um, significant difference, which means that we have very good uh, groups uh, distribution in the groups in the intervention control groups on the randomization. Uh, then what we see is that the, 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 the drop of the uh, plaque index in the, in the intervention group and also in the uh, control group, but you don't see so uh, intense drop uh, here. And even you, you see that it raises a little bit in the, after uh, uh, two weeks. So this, uh, four weeks, th this is uh, significantly different in T1. And, and this is a very important outcome. Then uh, when you compare uh, and uh, after six months, it, there is no significant difference, but you can see that you drop here and you drop here uh, the 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 black index this is the the um, another way to show you this and with this significant difference found in in 20 in uh, in uh, four weeks so what we can say about this uh, oral hygiene habits is in the intervention group is that uh, reduced plaque levels from children having followed the 21 day program in the short term. Uh, uh, average of the index was 0.99 uh, after uh, 21 days and two months compared with 1.72 uh, at baseline. At, uh, after six months, medium term plaque levels remain below baseline. Uh, T0, it was 1.52, uh, 1.55 uh, versus uh, 1.72 at T0. The control group providing toothpaste and toothbrush, as I have told you, has the same short-term effect on plaque levels as in the intervention group. The effect does not last over time, however, with an increase in plaque after um, levels after two months. Providing toothbrushing materials is immediately encouraging children to brush their teeth. However, the 21-day program seems to maintain the positive effect on plaque levels more time than control. Now we go to the, the Nigerian uh, results, and here um, the, these the, these results uh, they they are really uh, the beginning of the preliminary results because uh, it's missing a lot of data. So it's only a, um, a sh I will focus only on the intervention group. I will not compare with control group as this is uh, a very low sample. But I will show you the the results that we have. At, uh, until now, uh, uh, at T zero, sorry, at T zero, we have, um, as I told you, in Nigeria there were twenty schools, ten intervention schools with one eight hundred twenty seven children, and ten control schools. Those were the children that we could uh, analyze the data that we could analyze. Uh, so in the total of 1,274, but there are some, as you can see, some, uh, we will see some difference in every, every time uh, spot, so uh, we can uh, not consider uh, uh, this final data. So knowledge for at, at T0 for uh, there was 64% of children that were aware of the importance, the importance of brushing twice a day. And then uh, 27, 21.7% 20, uh, were using fluoride toothpaste and 96% uh, uh, use a toothbrush and a toothpaste. 
Uh, here you can see that uh, we we skip uh, many data. So at the moment we started, for instance, with uh, in the children questionnaire, we had 194 children and we only had 370 questionnaires. The same for the, the, the clinical evaluation. We have a little bit more data in this case. This is for the intervention group. And here you have the... the the control group also with uh, only uh, uh, 196 out of 660. And here um, we will need more clinical evaluation data. Uh, uh, all of the, those are the schools that, uh, listed, that are listed in all the tables that I have shown you until now. So in this case, uh, as I told you, the, the, this um, we, I think we should focus more on on the intervention group rather in comparing the intervention group with the control group. But anyhow, we can see that there is an increase uh, on knowledge here on brushing twice a day. It, cha it changes from sixty four percent to eighty six percent. And this is strongly significant. Nevertheless, you, you see this happening also in, in, the, in the control group. Here are the curves, you can see it. And then uh, in the, knowledge, the, the use of fluoride toothpaste, uh, it raises from 71% to 90%, which is also a good outcome. And it's strongly significant, which is very good. Here we have the same happening on the control group about the, tooth, the, the fluoride toothpaste. And so we can say that the intervention group uh, in Nigeria, there is a fair knowledge level um, of the importance of brushing twice a day uh, at baseline, 64%. The program immediately increased knowledge over uh, a quarter. <laughs> it changed to 91% of children after 21 days. At the end of the program, 86% of children knew that it's important to brush twice a day, uh, more 22% than in baseline. At the end of the program, 90% of the children brush the, with the fluoride toothpaste, which is 90% plus than the, the baseline. Uh, the, the other question that we used, if they brush two times or more in the day before. This is another question. Um, the, uh, we can see that they uh, started to brush more in the, in the, after the intervention. Uh, and here, the, 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 there is a drop. But as I told you, we should not consider at the moment these results because it's too uh, few information. Here you can see the graphics. And uh, about the intervention group in Nigeria, at the start of the program, uh, reported an incidence of twice daily brushing by the children was just 27%. And the uh, incidence uh, and the uh, prevalence almost uh, doubled in the conclusion of 28 day program intervention, reaching 50%. At the end of the program, 64% of the children reported they were now brushing their teeth twice a day with a 37% increase. And uh, looking uh, on oral health index, we can also see a drop on the, uh, in the index in the intervention group. Uh, and in the control group, there are some, also some results that uh, we need to uh, reanalyze. So we can focus only on this uh, um, intervention group and you can see that there is a, a drop on, on, the, on the plaque index. That it's uh, sorry. That is uh, significant, uh, strongly significant. So in this case, uh, the intervention group gradual but important reduction. We could see a gradual but important reduction in plaque levels for children having followed the 21-day program over the median term. An average of oral hygiene index was 1.919 after six months compared to 1.53 at baseline. And uh, the 21-day program is positive in changing brushing habits and plaque levels. 
So there are other objectives that were shown uh, previously and that we really want to, to study in this, uh, in this particular investigation. Um, that is, uh, uh, if this pro this, there is any evidence that the 21 day program is also effective in getting parents or carers uh, improving their brushing habits and uh, to measure the change in quality of life, well-being and social measures of school children after 21 days health program. And uh, we did uh, also these questions and, and, and we will look forward to study this, um, this, these issues. So in conclusion, we can see that the, the, the distribution of free toothpaste and toothbrushes seems to be insufficient to drive behavior change. A structured oral health intervention such as 21 day brush day and night program is a valid option to maintain the positive effect on oral hygiene over the medium term. Uh, in Indonesia, implementation of the brush day and night program seems important to maintain the positive effect on oral hygiene over the medium term. And in Nigeria, the 21 day program seems to have improved oral hygiene practices and oral health. The clinical data revealed in both countries that the 21 day program positively impacts the oral hygiene of the children in the intervention group. Um, reported plaque levels are lower than baseline after 21 days, two months and two and six months. <laughs> So, uh, and also as conclusion, we can say that countries where good oral hygiene is already common, such as Indonesia, uh, could positively benefit from the distribution of toothpaste and toothbrushes to achieve short-term goals. Uh, repeated provision of materials or combination with the 21-day program can be expected to achieve long-term improvements. We, uh, we certainly think that uh, there is always a need for the program to be implemented to get long-term improvements. Countries where good oral hygiene is less common, such as Nigeria, requires the implementation of a more structured program, such as the 21-day program, to achieve any improvement. If repeated twice over a school calendar, long-term improvements can be expected. So it should be uh, now tested if, uh, if we in introduce this uh, 21 days program twice a, a year if uh, we get better results. So, and uh, FDI uh, wants to thank Unilever for their generous support and commitment towards the promotion of empowering children to teach rural and to brush. And I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Mello. Now we're going to have a uh, panelist uh, Q&A um, at this time. So I'd like to introduce uh, Professor Eri from Indonesia. There's uh, Dr. Jarobi, Jarobi from Nigeria, and Dr. Sinead Malone as well be, will, be, will be up here, and Dr. Mello will be our moderator. Be oh, okay, better, better. You move one. Okay, okay. Now we can sit here. Um, uh, before before we we start with the with the uh, with the uh, the. the um, this uh, talk with uh, with both, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, before we start the, the, uh, this talk with the, both project leaders on, of Indonesia and and, uh, and Nigeria, I want to uh, ask you if you have any questions or if you want to do it at the end. You have questions? Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for. Um, I this important work, I think it's really helpful to have this kind of careful study in these two countries um, and could be a model in other countries as well. I know that, that clean water 
is also an issue in many, many countries. And I don't know the situation in either Indonesia or in Nigeria, sadly, but um, perhaps um, the panelists might address the issue of uh, access to clean water. And I know that, um, I guess the second part of my question is, Unilever has done so much on hand washing and clean hands around the world and whether or not there might be any possibility of combining the hand washing program with um, a toothbrushing program, especially for, for children, because the leading cause of death for children is pneumonia and diarrheal diseases around the world. So, yes, first I will uh, ask uh, Professor Terry uh, to uh, present herself, and then probably we can start uh, answering the, this, this question. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Trieri Astuti. I am the uh, Indonesian project leader uh, for BDN since 2006. So I think the opportunity to say thank you very much for FDI, World Dental Federation, and also for uh, Unilever, Global Unilever, that has already supported um, <clears throat> uh, Indonesia for this project, because uh, actually we have already get four phase, uh, phases uh, for this project. And, and maybe, um, so I have to introduce that Indonesia is an archipelago uh, country. Uh, so we have 70,000, 17,000 uh, island. Uh, hopefully that you uh, can visit our country in Indonesia. And we have 230 million people population, but just only 34,000 dentists registered in Indonesia. So that's why we have a lot of a problem because we lack of the dentists. And, <clears throat> and if you know uh, well, from the report from the Indonesian uh, Ministry of Health, uh, so uh, the DMFT in Indonesia among the children is about eight. So this is high though, I think. Uh, and uh, the the highest component is uh, the extracted. So um, so because we have this this pro, uh, this project, uh, so we starting you know uh, to to introduce the twenty one days uh, 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 twenty one days. Uh, yeah, program. So hopefully the the Ministry of Health can adopt this program as the, uh, the policy of Indonesian policy. I think this one. The, the water? Water. Okay, about the water. About the water. <clears throat> uh, I think the the fluoride. We don't have any uh, fluoride system in the water. So uh, this is the problem of us. So uh, so we suggest uh, some school that we have uh, to bring their own uh, uh, water from outside. So so all the children has their own uh, bottle. Uh, and when we have a, like a toothbrushing together or something, they can use their one. And after they have a, a meal after they break, so sometimes they just gargling. So we just suggest them to gargling the the water. But the water is not from the tap because we cannot drink the uh, water from the tap in Indonesia. So, uh, so they can use the water that they bring from, out, uh, from home. That's kind of something like that. Okay. Thank you, Professor Eric. Now I would like to address the same question to Professor Alavaldi. Thank you very much. Um, just like my counterpart did earlier, I think I'll first introduce myself formally. Um, Olabode Jarogbe um, from the Nigerian Dental Association, a lecturer at the prestigious University of Lagos, College of Medicine, University of Lagos, Faculty of Dental Sciences. Nigeria is um, a country with over 200 million population, and um, like 70% of the population live in rural areas and villages and all that. And uh, we've been involved in this project um, for over since about 2006. Um, Thanks to Unilever and FDI partnership, and we've been involved in different phases in different areas in the country, carrying on the message of oral health education to reach the less privileged, most especially, and in the hinterlands and also in the cities as well. And like the results of the studies that have been projected to you earlier, it has really been of immense benefits to the people. But we discovered that, especially in the rural areas, a lot of the um, pupils don't have access to good education and then oral hygiene is low amongst them. But with the aid of this project, we'll be able to reach them 
you know, with the message of good oral hygiene. And then there's been tremendous improvement in the oral hygiene status. And uh, as regards the water supply issue, there's no government supply in Nigeria. So you don't talk about um, for a little water or whatever. Uh, and our experience in most of the places we've been to is that the children come to school with their water. Of course, we have, they have their own uh, water parks that they bring to school. And uh, that's the way they've been able to get involved in the project and all that. So they already had an established way of bringing water from home for themselves to drink since there is no tap water in school for them to use at any point in time. So by and large, uh, I say thanks to Unilever FDI partnership because this project has been of immense benefit to the large teaming population of Nigeria and has already helped to improve the oral hygiene status of the children. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Now, Professor Lovat. Now, uh, Dr. Sinead. Um, so, uh, thank you for your knowledge of the Unilever's hand washing program. It's really encouraging that it's the message is um, spreading. So, um, Unilever has a sustainable living goals, and one of our goals is to improve the health and well being of one billion people by 2020. Of which, hand washing and tooth brushing twice a day are two components. Um, as to whether they could be combined into one program. Um, having read the protocol for the hand washing study in Mumbai, I fear for the complexity because it, it was a, that was certainly a very ambitious um, program. And I don't, I'm not familiar enough with the work of that team now to say whether that would be an opportunity for the future, something they you know that are they continuing to evolve the uh, hand washing work or not in the same way that we are with brush day and night. But thank you for your question. Thank you. It's a really interesting question, and it, it, it some, somehow it makes sense to try to have everything mm -hmm. together. But uh, of course, it depends on <laughs> the situation and, and the challenges of each country and uh, each each place. Yeah. Uh, but uh, and now we can uh, go for a little bit more to, to get some more information about the experience of uh, those those two project leaders. And uh, and we know that uh, we in this uh, phase four we try to introduce a little bit more of accuracy in in what we are dealing about the data about uh, how to to uh, randomize the, the 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 schools and 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 we introduce some more. Uh, questions try to involve the parents all this um, it's uh, I believe that it was a challenge for uh, this new uh, project phase and I would like you to comment on this uh, okay <coughs> yeah um, so uh, uh, actually for this phase four, uh, we don't have any uh, major challenge. I mean, because why? Because uh, uh, we have 100% uh, uh, students uh, present in all the, I mean, all the examination from the TO, TO21, T1 and T2. This is a little bit different when we have an on the last, uh, the phase three, because, um, you know, some, some students uh, we're moving to other places because you know uh, they are very social economics very low and then the, the parents sometimes are just moving but for the phase four uh, uh, I think the challenge the the this is not big but the challenge when we have already set up the time because we have to have fit I mean uh, set up the time like 21 days but at the time when we set up and then the school has their own uh, event or something like examination or whatever, so we cannot fit in the 21 days or some sometimes. And this is uh, like very minor, uh, minor problems. And also <clears throat> um, the minor problems, I think, uh, 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 I think this this is the, this this is the challenge that we have, but uh, the strategy that we have uh, uh, first we have already have agreement between the BDN project and the school and the principal, and we also asking to the uh, author uh, the. Uh, uh, education authority, local education authority, uh, to support us and tell them how important this project. Because you know that as as you know, Indonesia actually has already uh, uh, aware that they have to to 
uh, brush the teeth twice a day. But the problem, they don't in line with the suggestion that we have. They just brush the teeth, like uh, uh, take a bath and then uh, brush the teeth and then they have a breakfast and that's it. Uh, so the point is, Brush the teeth after meals, right in the morning. So, so, so in the in the uh, survey, they have ninety one point six percent has already brushed the teeth tw twice a day, but just only two point eight percent in line with the uh, in line with the uh, brush day and night. So that's why uh, I told them and just you know like uh, advocate, uh, advocate to them and just convince that very important one to uh, to uh, maintain the teeth. Why? Because when the children has the problem in the tooth, uh, so they can not going to school and then you know like interfere all the growth of the uh, children. So and then this is good though. I mean they allow us to do the uh, I mean the uh, the project. And I think uh, I'm sure that they, they appreciate and they said that uh, this is a good project for them. But the problem is just very short one, right? Just already six months that we did. Okay, something like that. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, well, for us in Nigeria, uh, we had some challenges, maybe not too much, but um, there are quite a number of challenges I'm going to enumerate. Um, reason is that, of course, you've been told that uh, the study is a randomized control trial. So we had a mixture of um, both rural and urban schools. Of course, they were randomly selected and all that. So we had some of the um, students in local settings and villages and all that. And in some cases, we had to do interpretation of the questions to the children before they could answer. So it wasn't like, of course, the questionnaires were printed in English, but if you give it to them directly in English like that, they may not be able to answer it. So we had to read it out to them and ask the questions and then provide the answer they gave us directly. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. That's for those in the rural areas, right? Because the education is not as high as that of uh, the children in the urban setting, since it was a mixed um, mixed uh, setting. And then um, as regards to the study population, we also observed that for those in the rural areas, they, they had a relatively higher dropout compared with those in the urban settings. The reason is that in most of the rural schools, some of the children were living not directly with their parents. Maybe their parents were either late or something, and they were living with their guardians and whatever, and so, Sometimes when it was holiday, they had to go to meet their parents and when it was time for them to resume in time in school, and then we had to carry out because the, the, the timelines were synchronized with the school calendar. So some of them were not, did not return to school, maybe after the 21 days that we were supposed to do our 21 day intervention. So a few of them may not be present in school at that moment because they had not come back from where the parents were located back to their guardians who were taking care of them in school. So that was another challenge. I think another challenge we also had was um, the issue of uh, the data entry. Of course, we the, we the tablet was introduced as at the time we were doing the data collection. Initially, we didn't get the tablets, but at the point in time, we got the tablets. Now we had the problem of imputing information on the field into the tablet, which was supposed to be translated directly onto the platform, the FDI platform. And that was why you saw that we still have a little backlog as regards, the, the data have been, has been collected quite all right. But to, to cover up what we did was now, we collected in some of the information in paper form, on printed forms on the field, and we're now translating them using the tablets onto the FDI uh, platform. So these were some of the um, hiccups we had, but uh, by and large, it was a very, very interesting study. Another funny thing we observed was that for the either the control or intervention schools, somehow, maybe because the children, after especially for the intervention, maybe some of the children, by virtue of interaction with some of their peer, peers in the other, other schools who were not even part of the study, we got feedback that you know those ones were now craving for <laughs> for the project to also be executed in their in their schools. Of course, that wasn't um, part of our project. So what we could do was just to encourage them and all that. So we had we saw that if our intervention was having an effect, even though we didn't measure it, on the other neighboring schools 
by virtue of cross interaction between the students in the school we had intervention in and the other neighboring schools. And, um, and also, it was, it was a high impact as of the education on the parents or the guardian. Of course, that was, you will see in the results that was being generated that there was a tremendous improvement from the baseline on, I mean, what we eventually got at the end of the study. So these are some of the things, very interesting things we observed. So by and large, it was really a good experience for us in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your, uh, because, for, because this is really uh, what makes uh, this, progr this program uh, really valuable because it's spreading the, the knowledge and the information needed for everybody to uh, start brushing or improving their, their brushing. And, and, and that, that's what we want is to level all the people in, 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 in their oral hygiene and, and to get everybody brushing their teeth uh, correctly. And, and, and of course, for those who have some experience on uh, uh, field that, that uh, uh, collecting, it's, it's really complicated to manage <laughs> to have all those children uh, in, in, in a place uh, with the teachers, uh, uh, getting the programs and getting the time to see them without pushing <laughs> to end up and and get everything ready to go back to the to the lessons and and I understand all that because I I have some experience on that and and it's really uh, outstanding how you could see so many children and and have uh, such a, a good uh, outcome uh, with this uh, with with this program. Um, I would uh, now give an, another uh, another time the floor to. I, I think the, that emphasizing the. The, um, the the difficulty of data collection um, is very useful um, for this kind of important study. Um, but I wonder if you might comment on uh, access to the internet and whether or not phones um, could be utilized or even simpler systems. I know with reproductive health, we've used a stone system in some very rural villages in Africa where you know, very simple situations or a motorcycle that would come in and collect, uh, you know, offer internet so that the data could be uploaded uh, from that particular village uh, from a tablet or um, from a phone. Maybe you can comment about the utility of of innovative ways to do data collection with well, phones. We, we uh, well, uh, as a matter of fact, I, I believe that this is a, a complicated issue uh, uh, because, um, for instance, uh, not in, in this project, but I have another project which is the World Oral Health Day, and and uh, and uh, uh, yesterday, I, uh, the 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 leader from Sudan came to me and said that. She has, she has huge difficulties on having Wi-Fi, uh, internet to, to, to upload the documents. So this is a very challenging uh, situation uh, in Africa that we should think how to deal with. But it's really, um, uh, well, we have to think, but it has to do with government and it has to do with other kind of politics that we cannot deal. But I don't know if you have any experience on that yeah, and, or you, but, but, uh, but I feel that a uh, lot of work has to be done in, in, in Africa regarding this kind of problems with internet and, and, and but I don't, you, in, in Africa and, and I don't know if in, in, in Asia also, but you can. Thank you very much. Um, as a matter of fact, I think the major problem was that um, a lot of um, us that were doing the data entry didn't understand the system initially because um, the data, the tablet was introduced more or less um, in the course of um, obtaining data on the field. Now, you, there was supposed to be an offline mode in the data collection in case the internet does not function very well so that even in the offline mode, you could collect your data, even the Wi-Fi is not working well, and then get it translated much later onto the platform. But somehow, we could not get it properly synchronized. I guess maybe we didn't understand the technicality very well. So that was where the problem is. But I think if, if we sit down and look at it very well, it's something that works very well. I am very sure about it. Um, a few of us um, got the data imputed in the offline mode, but when we checked on the platform, we didn't see it. So I don't know, maybe there was um, some kind of technical hitch or breakdown. But by and large, I believe if we look at 
I mean, the data collection using the tablet very well and uh, try and work on it. I believe it's a much better uh, system of data collection than using, or, or maybe use of the phone as well. Maybe the static scan, static scan stuff on the phone, phones and whatever, but it has to be a good phone that um, has a, a, a mobile applications that can easily be used. And of course, it's not all the, um, the people collection, uh, collecting the data that will possibly have access to such phones. So, but I believe if you look at it very well, it's a much better system than using the paper um, collect data collection system and then having to transcribe or translate much later. But uh, these are some of the challenges and uh, I mean, challenges are meant to be surmounted. So I believe if we look at it critically, we can actually work on it and make future data collection much better than it is right now. Thank you. Do you have any? Yeah, uh, uh, but the, the internet is okay. I mean, but so and so, because we are in the field, right? So, um, and so that's why uh, I told to Charlotte last time, I said, okay, I, uh, we decided to use the paper uh, and I'm sure that we will uh, send all the data on the time, uh, at the, <laughs> on time, and we did it. <laughs> Sit down, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, thank for mentioning Charlotte because Charlotte did a, a wonderful job yeah, during yeah. this time, and she, she, and I, I forgot to, to 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 thank her in the in my presentation because she really managed all the project yeah. and, and and did it in a quite good way, yeah. and and this is also very important for the outcome because otherwise if you are not managing it well then we are, you get in trouble yes. <laughs> so uh, thank you charlotte for everything thank so you. Um, but now i would come back to something that all about the said that the, he could see some outcomes in other schools or and in, in the in the families and what about uh, uh, indonesia did this happen too the, the, the results spread spread that to other um, schools and the families that were okay okay originally in the study okay okay um but actually we have uh, the phase one and phase two so we emphasizing in like a tot right so we just thinking that we need someone to be a, a agent of change so that's why uh, besides we do an examination to the children, so we do also uh, doing like a content uh, uh, dental health education and asking for the parents and also teacher to, you know, uh, less doing like, uh, um, they have to be the, the agent of change, how to do to their family first and then for the community. So that's why it's, uh, and and maybe so I have an experience a very good experience um, back like uh, in a phase one or four or two um, so the, the the parents that we thought uh, give the, the dental health education uh, and then they have a, they have a, you know like a create something the song for the song for the uh, students, how to teach the student. Uh, this is uh, created by, by by the parents. And I'm glad that that, stud uh, that school uh, want the, the best oral health in, uh, in West Java because the project of uh, that, that one is live, learn, love. Yeah. And this time also for the phase three and four, because we all could teach them and we have a TOT like a training of trainer and this is like an impact to others I think yeah that one yeah that's good yeah this is really a very good outcome and it's very important to uh, to work with uh, with everybody and and the, and uh, it, I don't know what is your experience with the teachers uh, in in the field and uh, the, the people that helps the teachers when they have to implement the the, the 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 toothbrushing uh, is it easy or you feel you have some difficult face some difficulties on that well um for us because uh, originally even before the project started we had to familiarize ourselves with the school we first got um, ethical clearance from the education board and then we had to go to the school to meet the principal and then introduce the project to them both in the control and the intervention group. Of course, they had to be, we had to explain to them the study protocol and all that. So they were already aware of the projects even before 
we started. So we got their cooperation, and then immediately we started the project. They were all excited about it and all that. And we also noticed the positive, positive impact, even apart from, you know, the children were our target group, the children and their parents. And then we also, I mean, discovered that the teachers, there was, I mean, a lot of excitement among them, and they were always very eager to ask questions about anything that had to do with oral hygiene and whatever. So it was a win-win situation for everybody. That was our own experience in Nigeria. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, actually, it's very difficult to, uh, I mean, uh, to uh, dealing with the teacher. Why? Because the teacher is has a lot of tasks. So that's why I emphasizing this one to the uh, parents. In Indonesia, some parents still, you know, waiting for the students. Uh, like because this is uh, first grade and second grade, they are, you know, just waiting and gossiping or whatever. I said, instead of gossiping, I think that's better if we do something to the parents. And then I teach them, so I teach them to do uh, a lot of things like how to to, to maintain all the brushing, uh, uh, tooth brushing. And they are instruct, instruct the students, be an instructor when they have like, mass tooth brushing. Not the teacher, but the parents. So I give them like a fast, like a fast. Uh, I mean that they, they put like this in brush day and night fast, and they be the like we call the caregiver. So and then they are doing like a, let's go. It's time to brush the teeth in something like that, and that's good though. I mean instead of the teachers doing because the teacher is always thinking like. There's a lot of tests. You come to my school and then you give me uh, more tests something like that so that's why the parents doing and it was going well it was going well and then like the parents very proud because they have like a something like, oh like I'm, i look like a dentist and doing something to the, to the students and they are going inside to, to the school and uh, the, the principals allow them to do dental health education in front of the students. So this is, uh, I mean, so this is our project that's in, uh, emphasizing in the parents instead of the teacher. Teachers also get involved, but parents has the big portion to for this one. Yeah. Okay. And very inter interesting in both uh, cases. It's it's really something that it's nice to hear and to talk because usually you don't see that on papers or in articles. And these are some realities that go together with some investigations and projects. And this is always a, a very important work that has been done. Uh, I don't know if anyone can, wants to do any question. Um, I, I would ask Dr. Arati uh, her experience uh, about this partnership and, and how uh, you can manage all these uh, investigations uh, in this, uh, with the, all these countries. Uh, and Thank you, Professor Melo. So this has been an amazing partnership working with the FDI and the National Dental Associations. Uh, we have a very open uh, uh, partnership. Uh, so basically, uh, both uh, Unilever or the Unilever teams in the countries, FDI and the National Dental Associations, all of us are basically working towards one common goal, that is improving the oral health of children and also through the children to their parents. Uh, uh, like I mentioned about a Unilever, Unilever Sustainable Living Plan, social mission is really big in the category. What we're really trying to achieve is, is not just giving them toothpaste and toothbrushes. What we really want to do is to bring about a good behavior change. Because if they actually do, if they actually learn this behavior at a young age, they're more likely to continue as they grow older. And obviously, if they brush twice a day with the fluoridated toothpaste, obviously the benefits are there in terms of less dental caries and also, also in terms of social ramifications and things like that so uh, and it has been an amazing experience because especially in these two countries and also in many other countries the teams work very closely with uh, uh, the National Dental Associations, Professor Trieri, Professor Olabode, uh, and they work very closely to actually make this happen. So for us, uh, we initiate the process, but actually, honestly, all the hard work is actually done at the country level uh, with the National Dental Associations and the Unilever teams working in very close partnership. 
and uh, I don't think it would have been possible without that. And I would also like to uh, say a special thanks to Charlotte, who's uh, handled this very well from the FDI side, and to Professor Mello. Thank you so much for being a part of this and for also um, all the statistics and the work that you have done. So thanks. Thank you very much. And, and just uh, to end, uh, Dr. Shined, uh, your experience uh, now uh, uh, in this project, uh, what do you think or what do you feel in this, uh, with these challenges, uh, different challenges? Not so much um, challenges. This is the first time I've been involved with an FDI project and the first time as somebody who my degree is in chemistry has worked on a project which has such a direct and important influence on the oral health of children in the um, countries where the study takes place. So that's been, I've found that personally very motivating and interesting to be involved in such a project rather than something that's kind of more abstract or more research focused and just on toothpaste technology or what goes on the side of the toothpaste box, which is the rest of my job. Thank you. Uh, is there any additional question? Yes. Yeah. I, I just think this is wonderful information. And I think the comment that um, uh, that was made by our uh, Nigerian um, representative here, as well as uh, Dr. Milo, uh, about the community uh, effect so that if a school's in a particular community, that there is a benefit to other children in that community and whether or not this might lend itself to uh, randomizing by uh, communities, like a control community with no schools receiving information um, and toothbrushing instructions versus a community that maybe does and whether or not that might be something to consider in the future. Maybe you might say more about that effect size because I think it's really important information. Thank you. Yeah, it's true. We 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 should always focus on that uh, on that part and try to figure out what is the real outcome and and the best that we can get from this uh, these projects and these investigations. Yes, I agree with you. And uh, um, and so I, I think that wrapping up a little bit the, the, the session, we can, we can say that it's not only important to investigate the efficacy or uh, the, the outcome of the program, it's really, really interesting to see what goes around and uh, what happens and what we can get additionally, because uh, when we're talking about uh, oral health, we are talking about health, we are talking about well-being. We are talking about uh, uh, everything that get could get a better life for everybody. So uh, it's it's really important not only to get uh, good outcomes as, as we could uh, understand that this program gives. We could see it on uh, brush day in, day in night phase three. And now in phase four, everything is in line for to come to good outcomes uh, to and, and, and good results. So we are really happy that we could have as FDI partnership with Unilever and get with this program so so uh, many good outcomes because we have worked with 10 countries in, in phase three. Now we worked with two, but uh, uh, the, the work lasts and, and it's, it's really nice to see uh, this uh, message spread throughout the world and get uh, everybody uh, uh, brushing their teeth. And just one final comment which occurred to me hearing Professor Malo speak is, I think it was like the it was like mid 90s Unilever did a study in um, schools in Scotland encouraging um, twice daily brushing. Parents were very much involved. The parents came into the schools to organize the brushing. And then almost 20 years later, uh, Professor Cynthia Pine, who led that study, went back and found those same children as now as adults, interrogated with their permission, of course, their dental records, and found that having been involved in that study as children aged five to six, they had better oral health, less interventions, less fillings, for example, than their equivalent peers. So just a nice piece of evidence there that if you intervene early, you can have a, a benefit for, for life. Yeah, yeah. 
Thank you very much for that input. Uh, this is a really important outcome, and 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 this leads to what we we all defend, which is prevention. First of all, prevention work with uh, with uh, with the children and try to to avoid them to to have the, the disease. And toothbrushing is one of the steps that is very important, of course, together with sugar and 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 all that. It's it's uh, it's really important to prevent the disease and as. Uh, uh, as early as we can, we can act, uh, we must act and, and have this outcome. So uh, I want to thank the participants and, and, the, and the audience for their participation and for, for, for being here. Thank you very much to all of you. So I actually have one question. Prior to today, I wasn't aware of any of your work. So I'm very impressed with what you've done. And what it looks like to me from an outsider view, it looks like you've established a protocol and are establishing that's effective with this particular model. This is phase four, so two part question then is what's the ultimate goal of this program? Is, it a, is your goal to force multiply this protocol out to many other things? Because basically this is like research, you can go to a company like Unilever for a dollar and 10 cents, we can reach these children for life. That's one thing. And then the next part of this, what's, is there a phase five that's coming? Is there a preview? So those are the two thoughts that came to my head. You can start though. Oh, there is a phase five. It's, we've been talking about it now for a couple of months with the FDI and Unilever and what do we actually want to achieve? But your comment there about um, can we get program have momentum that could have almost a life of its own um, without our intervention is one of the things we are talking about. Um, can we have dentists get involved in different communities as a part of a, a commitment from the dentists to their, not just their customers or their patients, but to the, the community within which they work. So yeah, making, having the program give it a life of its own is something we are interested in. So we have been running this program in many countries, but as you know, it's so difficult to get the buy-in of the ministries, the governments, the stakeholders, and it's very uh, good to show actual evidence that actually it works and it has a positive health benefit. So we are very hopeful that with this, you know, we can actually make it go forward so much more, reach out to so many more children and actually do some good out there. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed our phase five, we can also gain more momentum going forward as well, so. Okay, um, uh, especially thanks to with, uh, Unilever, Global Unilever and FDI, uh, especially for Indonesia, because I know that um, we starting to, uh, to advocate the, the Ministry of Health and also Education. So hopefully the 21 days, of course, the, the, the program can be the one of the curriculum in Indonesia, because uh, we have already Almost done because uh, uh, we have a, uh, a World Oral Health Day and also in line with 21 days program and also the the month uh, the national uh, oral health month also we use the 21 days so thank you very much for for your support thank you. Once again, so I want to lend my voice to um, the word of appreciation to Charlotte, who has been very, very wonderful with helping with the execution of these projects. Honestly, at times I won't call her during off office hours and uh, she provides prompt response and I'm like, God, this is wonderful. So, you know, and to FD, I mean, Unilever, I mean, provision of the materials to use and all that, it's been a source of encouragement. And by and large in Nigeria, we've been able to, through the efforts as well that's been put on ground and Unilever and then with the um, National Dental Association, Nigerian Dental Association, the uh, Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education have been fully incorporated into the program. So it makes it a lot easier to reach more children if we choose to go into another phase as it is. Like I told you, we have to get ethical clearance from the Ministry of Education for us to be able to reach the schools. So when you get clearance from the Education Ministry, we are able to reach the schools, talk to the principal, and then the principal gets the teachers arranged, then we explain to them the protocol and all that. So it's always a very interesting time. I'm always very happy time I go to the field and <laughs> we're about to execute this program, honestly. So it's a lovely thing and I give thanks and I'm appreciation to everybody that's contributed immensely to the success of this program. Thank you.
Yeah, but uh, the the main goal of the the pro the program is is to get the information and the knowledge for the kids and to have them brushing their teeth. So uh, the first uh, intention of these investigations was to see if this program works, if it it's real, they really maintain the, their habits and if they brush their teeth. And, and afterwards, if we get those this positive answer, which I mean, which we are getting, we must understand how long does this last, uh, which means when, when should we repeat the twenty one days? Uh, uh, because one, uh, what I think is that you might uh, last uh, get the program during uh, six months, let's say, but then the children ends up the school. Goes to goes to holidays and comes again, and everything uh, might be forgotten. So probably it might be needed to be done before going to holidays and then start again in the beginning of the year. Then this is something that you should and try to understand if it's needed and if it works in in order to have every, uh, every children always aware and and doing what they should do because I, I think that this, uh, we always have to think uh, this as an intervention with a cost benefit. So if it, it should not be done too many times because it would be too, uh, it could cost a lot, but the times that are needed in order to maintain uh, those habits in, the, in those children. If I may say something in addition to what we observed during uh, the initial stage of the project, especially for the first 21 days. Of course, you know, we had to do baseline before we started the project. Now for us in Nigeria, what we did was we got the um, contacts, the phone numbers of the parents and all that, apart from the calendars that are given out for them to tick every day when they brush in the morning and then um, in the evening, which is taking a long and which we just to cross check every day till the end of the 21 days. But by virtue of the phone contacts we have, we also send text messages. So that helps to reinforce, because the reinforcement aspect of it is very, very important. What we want to do is drive a habit change. Now, it's been learned, for, of course, from previous studies that if they consistently do the same thing over that 21 days, it becomes reinforced and then less energy is needed for them to keep it up, even for life, like you said in the other previous studies. So I think, by and large, the most important part is to keep up that reinforcement aspect in whatever way we can do it. Of course, we also had songs that were formulated, and you know that in the morning when they gather for the first, in, in the morning every day before that for the first 21 days, they will sing, you know, brush in the morning, sing, and they get fully involved. It makes them happy and they feel part and parcel of that study. So I think all this helps with the reinforcement. And so that even at the end of the project, you see they are now able, by virtue of the fact that everything is already established in their system, even without Anybody talking to them anymore? They're able to maintain that habit. So I think it's very, very that 21 days reinforcement of that habit is very, very important. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, now we will have uh, something that is related with the, the FDI celebration of uh, the World Oral Health Day, and uh, in 2020 we will have every asking we will uh, ask everybody to make a pledge. So we will take a picture all together with a pledge, and and then uh, uh, and then we will end up the, the the session. So, how do you yeah. Like this? He's the way. Hi, Baba. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, panelists, for a very enlightening and informative presentation. Um, I now I have the CE verification code. Please keep this code in a secure place as it, it is required to obtain your continuing education credits when using the online CE verification system. CE verification can be done this year through the ADA Events mobile app or through ada.org backslash verify CE. This code is not published outside the course. It is your responsibility to keep this number for your records. The course number is 5157. The verification code is 1056. Again, the course number is 
5157, the verification code 1056. And thank you for attending the course and enjoy the rest of your time at the ADA FDI World Dental Congress.